we are going to keep getting it metal with, I would say, the metal release of, of the bunch this time. It comes from Hell Ripper. The record is called Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags. Uh, the third album from Hell Ripper, although I think it's fair to say the second as this project has kind of quite noticeably skyrocketed um, to some of the upper regions of popularity in the extreme metal scene at least hell ripper is if you are not aware a one-man project based in scotland uh james mcbain specializing in the kind of like blackened speed metal that if you like it hits a spot like nothing else and i would say since the kind of big midnight boom in the 2010s uh, since the release of his last album, The Affair of the Poisons, in 2020, Hell Ripper has become the breakout name in that particular heavy metal niche. Particularly here in the UK, Hell Ripper has gotten really fucking popular. Like, I don't know if there's something that you all have noticed in, in your spheres. Uh, so, I know you've raved about it. I've seen the name kind of creeping up lineups as it goes. I've not actually really gone in on it prior to this album, but I had definitely seen the name pop up more and more. Yeah, but he, he's pretty much everywhere. Like, in terms of just the good old-fashioned popularity gauge of merch spotting... Go to any, like, you know, real heavy metal show in the UK, and there will be Hell Ripper shirts and, and patches. Um, the shows have gotten bigger. Uh, it's become quite a prominent name, the sort of the current old-school heavy metal boom, but for kind of, like, the purish, like, shit-kicking, ruckus-causing maniac version uh, of that. The people love Hell Ripper. Uh, Affair of the Poisons was first covered on TNM when Alec had it in his top five that year. This is the first time we're properly reviewing one. Uh, I think, compared to something like Midnight, which has been the big touchstone of this stuff for the past ten years, Hell Ripper is a lot wirier. Like, in a way that suggests it's even more hyperactive, if you can believe that. Like, Midnight goes a lot more for kind of the girth of, like, big, ballsy, motorhead and mm. Venom-type songs. Hell Ripper is a bit like listening to that on times two speed. Like, proper pedal to the metal, amp up the, the thrash and the speed. It's like listening to Gremlins play speed metal or something. Like, the records are so just like, ah, batshit fast. That is fully what I was just expecting this record to be. But, like... So, and the thing is, there is a hell of a lot of that on it, and it fucking rips. Like, but I was surprised. I was constantly taken aback by the directions that this album finds itself yeah. going in on occasion. Because all like, of that said, he's getting a bit adventurous with this one. Yeah, like, I think you're right. The core of this album is just pure, just like raging, full on blast off, like, shred, play fast riffs, pummel away at the drums really quick screech his little head off like all just going like full full pelt white knuckle roller coaster just no breaks and then every couple of songs they're gonna go like and here's a like like the title track coming in three songs in and just being this complete deviation from that caught me completely off guard and i was like this is really interesting for what i was expecting to just be pure fucking speed metal basically like, yeah like this is the first hell ripper i would go over 30 minutes and it doesn't stop there <laughs> and it goes over 40 like there is a definite conscious upping of the complexity and how songs might wonder more which is quite strange for a project that is so based in just like smash a bottle over your head fuck shit up but there were parts of this record that like genuinely surprised me and took me off guard in a way i don't normally associate with bands in this lane and i found that pretty rewarding apparently he's moved up to the highlands since the last album and the music as a result has become a lot more inspired by scottish history and, and, and folklore so the title there uh is it comes from a line in a robert burns poem it's almost like a tour of like here are all the ghouls and beasties you might encounter in the wilds of scotland the yeah. nuc the knuckle the the cursed carrion crown the hissing marshes i'll have to ask mark if, he, if he's met any of them on his, on his travels but um i i just love how this sounds first of all like it's so nasty the snare yeah. is going mad the thrash riffs feel like the kind where fingers are just like flying over the fretboard. The Tom Araya scream he does at the start of the Cursed Carrying Crown is great. Uh, and it feels like the riffs are made to feel more evil on this one by all of the kind of mystic shit that's going on top of them. Like, I, the Deceiver, is such a wrecking ball of a riff at the start. But the lead parts come in, it's like, oh shit, is that a wizard playing this? Like, the, the, the title track, full of that Swedish melodic black metalisms... And it's so awesome to hear a seven-minute Hell Ripper track with all of that like fleet-footedness in the guitar lines and, and the grand scope. And then you get a huge chant, a long chant about warlocks, and it feels like epic this time. And then you get bagpipes. The <laughs> and then the bagpipes. Yeah, like because this is so heavy metal, but it's so fist pumping and uh, and legitimately heavy and aggro. Swedish kind of and a lot of the black metal stuff on there with how evil it can sound, but it's got uh, like. Reminds, really reminds me of like Judas Priest in just how like fist pumping heavy metal it gets as well. And like like the Deceivers one, I was like, oh that that was when I really was just like 
I'm getting into this. There's a riff like in the middle of that. Like, I think it's like three minutes in or something. That is so good. Mm. This was a covering quite a lot of ground. And then when that went into the title track, and I was like, okay, this is really stunt to spread its wings. And I look at, yeah, so he is clearly like taking like the mystical side of Scotland and then just going, but let's just pump it through the most like raging, fired up, like hell ripper heavy metal sound. Like. In terms of like scope of ambition it's almost like kill them all to ride the lightning or something like I, yeah. I really didn't see any of this stuff coming um almost every song will have like a part or a riff change or a tempo change that you didn't see coming and will totally lift the song like a big fist pumper melodic heavy metal part out of nowhere a big epic gallop an acoustic change or something like i never thought that i would be going to check out like i, I never thought that i would be saying go check out the hell ripper album if you like spirit adrift or whatever for kind of just like you know amazing melodic heavy metal guitar playing but this has got it yeah loads of it like i mean it's gonna be a bit of everything like I say like goat vomit nightmare just being like <laughs> three <vomit> minutes <laughs> like that, that, that that's one of those things that, that that song is like no nonsense that's probably the most straightforward no nonsense like let's just fucking rip song on there but it's so good the guitar lick at the start of that is yeah. so insanely ott it's like i don't care what kind of whether you're into extreme metal or not you've got to find that a little bit exciting just for shred yeah, totally. And, and like the shred all over this record is really fun. It's never he can it, like play. he's proper. It, it, like you can it's probably a little bit self-indulgent, but it's also <laughs> really exhilarating and just kind of like it never feels like the solos always kind of feel like they they are like accompanying and and actually enhancing the song rather than just kind of like oh, and I'm just going to wank around my guitar for for a bit now. It's always kind of like we need we need a triumphant heavy metal guitar solo to come in just to you know take this song and that's what a guitar solo in my like should be. It should be that thing you know. This song needs to go up a notch. Let's rip out a solo. And every time he does it, it's exactly what it is on this record. Yeah, I, I think the the upping of kind of like the black metal and the speed metal influences is another way, aside from your kind of power trip crossover thrash stuff, of making thrash metal steel feel kind of dangerous and exciting. Because you put that kind of like early Bathory meets Exciter or whatever thing in there, and it's so like off its nut hyper aggressive that it makes the thrash riffs just feel way more like they can fly off, fly off the rails at, at any moment. Like, word go from uh, the knuckle lovey is just, like, on that. Um, but it also it gives the songs more different avenues to kind of go down, which this absolutely utilises the most of any Hell Ripper record to date, because the kind of songs for the, from them before would not have had a little acoustic breakdown before, yeah. like, a full-on neoclassical-esque dual harmony part. It's got proper full-on black metal passages, maybe for the first time, in terms of, like, again, like, I Deceive His Chorus is full-on th- throwing the claw in a blizzard stuff. Mester Storm has a really good, like, that proper, like, real, like, evil black metal sort of passage coming through, like, in the middle of it. And again, that just kind of, like, propels the song forward even more. Again, that's an eight-minute track, so when you hit this bit, it's, it's this really refreshing change of kind of, like, let's go even more evil and more, like, glacial and cold. Yeah, like, uh, Mester Storm has got, like... This like a sweeping plague of locusts of a song, like a huge, you know, uh, finish, and it has melodic parts. They don't, they don't bring the excitement down. It just lets your ear be taken somewhere else. Like you know, there's still a proper, just absolute headbanger riffs, but the solo sections themselves are a lot more like intricate and and, and impressive. Uh, and again, I Deceiver is like otherwise mainly built on a D beat, so there's more in the way of like different strands of the extreme music tree being brought in to kind of make a hole here instead of what i think what's beginning to really mark hell rip apart here is some of these projects are just like an exact replication of something that was made in 1983 i yes. think we talk about, about midnight isn't it yeah right? <laughs> they're the best at it right but like the hissing marshes starts with bass straight out of the motorhead song yeah yeah but the way that that brings it in with everything else is like almost innovative and i think sometimes this like speed metal stuff can come across kind of boneheaded to people right like it's so just yeah headbang and throw the horns and it's like joyously idiotic with it but hell ripper is one of the ones where you're like properly taken aback by the playing and now as well the the song construction and how legit it is yeah like so i was expecting this to be kind of just boneheaded yeah. like and i was i was like and there, there, there are that. moments when it does get quite boneheaded and it's loads of fun i think like like so the curse coming on and that, that just sort of barrels along into its finale just like full pelt runaway train but there is there is intricacies which make the which is like give it a really interesting dynamic and almost make the 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 like boneheaded moments more fun as kind of like the reward for something that is for when they're experimenting out like 
Yeah, Hellripper's always been a really fun project, but this is the first record where I think you could call it genuinely impressive. Like, on a level beyond just, like, how catchy and ripping the tunes are, as they absolutely were on, on Affair of the Poisons particularly. Uh, but, like, in my mind, I thought I had sussed what Hellripper was, and that that all that, that, that was all that it would be. And then he throws some, like, epic bagpipes at me, and I go, well, clearly I was wrong. And it's just so evil as well. Like, I Deceiver and The Cursed Carrying Crown, they are frontrunners for some of the most evil songs of the year so far. And, and that title track is, is something like... Every time a solo starts in this... I've got my arms in the air cheering. There's a bit at the end of the Curse Carrying Crown where the mad like speed metal solo suddenly transitions into a full on black metal tremolo, and I yeah. whooped the first time I, I heard and that's it. That's about all when it's just like <laughs> when it's just going full power and it's barreling from like I said the solo into the tremolo, and it's like no time to actually like transition, just keep going, go at it, like, and it's so fun. Like, yeah, if it's you so like, evil. If you like heavy metal, you should check out the new Hell Ripper record. It's called Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags. If that did not already convey heavy metal to you.